Hey, what's that? Oh, hey, it's my Logitech G Pro X Super Light. I guess I'll finally review it then. So, this mouse released about half a year ago and is considered by many to be one of the best wireless gaming mice. I have maimed this mouse for nearly 6 months now, so let me tell you how good this mouse actually is, what's wrong with it, and if it's worth the price. I really like the shape of this thing. It's also known as the potato shape, and it's the first ambidextrous mouse I'm able to claw, palm, and fingertip comfortably. That's actually very unique, as most mice are only comfortable for one or two of these three grip styles. It's an ambidextrous design, though they remove the side buttons on the right side, meaning it's really targeted to right-handed mouse users. I would say it's best for medium to large hands, mine are 19.5 by 10.5 centimeters, and the mouse feels pretty good size-wise. The mouse weighs in at around 60 grams, which is super light. <laughs> the grip tape and thicker feet I put on mine at around 3.5 grams. I love how they did this without using a honeycomb design, as this looks and feels way better in my opinion. Very nice, weight balancing is great as well, so overall it feels really good. Build quality is also pretty damn good, no creaking whatsoever. One thing that does bother me however are the buttons. The side buttons are quite mushy, and the main buttons have some concerning quality issues, just look at this. Button wobble is luckily no issue on my unit. The clicks itself are a bit disappointing as well, I really would have liked some kale switches for the $150 price tag. Good thing though is that this mouse supposedly doesn't have any double click issues, unlike the original G Pro Wireless. The scroll wheel feels pretty nice, it's not super tactile, but it does have defined steps and a slightly looped feel. It's pretty easy to click as well. I put BTL grips on my super light, which honestly is not really necessary as the coating of the mouse itself is great. It also comes with grip tape in the box, but those are just horrible. Made a video about that as well. The stock feet are very big, but very thin. They feel quite slow and scratchy. I would really recommend getting some core pads or tiger ice feet with this, I'll leave some links in the description. I use core pads on mine and they feel a lot better, still more of a controlled glide due to the large surface area. I believe Tiger Ice feet are slightly faster, but you only get one pair. If you replace those feet, make sure you see the screws after taking the stock feet off, as there's some weird black layer underneath the stock feet which you have to remove as well, otherwise you will have sensor tracking issues. It also comes with a PTFE puck, but I don't use any puck at all, so it's a bit lighter. I lost my puck though, so just imagine this is all PTFE. Honestly, I can't really notice a difference in glide using the puck. In order to achieve this low weight of roughly 60 grams, Logitech decided to remove the DPI button and RGB, which is fine by me as I rather have the low weight. It also uses micro USB instead of USB-C and the cable is made out of rubber, so you shouldn't use this thing wired. The rechargeable battery lasts quite a long time though, so you will only have to charge it once every couple of weeks or so. Wireless connectivity and sensor performance is absolutely fantastic, nothing to remark there. As I said, I've been using this mouse for almost 6 months and I still have no issues with durability. Just the clicks disappoint me, though they're not the worst I felt. I still like this mouse a lot, although I'm very tempted to try and get a final mouse Starlight 12 mouse, which is made out of magnesium, which sounds so much better than plastic. That mouse has a ton of other drawbacks though, such as horrible availability, so not sure if I would count that as a good alternative. But I'll make sure to make a video about that as well, if I manage to ever get one. So, let's talk about the price. It retails for $150. This makes it really hard to recommend as there are so many good cheaper alternatives. I bought mine a while back at Amazon Italy for just €100 Euros or $120, which was definitely worth it and the retail price should have been somewhere around there in my eyes. I don't think I would be willing to pay $150 for this mouse as a normal consumer as there are so many better deals. Like the XM1R is available for just $70, 
The Viper Ultimate is available for under 100 on sale. Orochi V2 is $70 as well. I'll leave links to this mouse in the description as well as some good alternatives. Thanks to all of you affiliate link clickers by the way. If you really don't mind too much about paying a premium for the Super Light, it definitely is a really good mouse for both gaming and productivity. It is my favorite mouse so far, though only by a very small margin. Mainly due to it being wireless compared to the XM1 and being suitable for fingertip and palm grip as well, whereas the XM1 is really made for claw grip. I still like the shape of the XM1 slightly more for claw grip and the clicks are better. Alright, thanks for watching and enjoy some spicy gameplay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Dude! What? What? Oh, what? What?